In this video, I'm going to share with you my complete website design process, including all the tools and systems I use to streamline each one of my clients' projects. So whether you're a beginner designer or a seasoned pro, in this video, I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks that have helped me streamline every single one of my clients' projects and avoid those dreaded never-ending projects with endless requests for changes that ultimately end up in unhappy clients and unhappy designers. So if that interests you, then I invite you to watch on to the end. Let's dive right in. But first, for those who are new, welcome or welcome back. For those of you who have subscribed to the channel already, I'm Myra, I'm a web designer. And in this channel, I talk about design, business tools, and just in general, my own journey as a new content creator. So if any of those topics interest you, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also the bell notification button below. So I've been a freelancer for quite a few years, but I decided to niche down to web design in recent years. I'm not gonna tell you the whole story of how I became a designer that will be a topic for a different video but since I became a web designer and I'm also doing a little bit of branding work included in my project I personally divide my web design process into five phases the first phase of the process is what I call the discovery meeting or the discovery call the second phase is the content preparation slash onboarding the third phase is the branding phase the fourth phase is the actual website design and development stage. And the last stage is the offboarding and the launch of the website. So let's start with the discovery call. The discovery call is typically a virtual meeting that sometimes can also be in person. And it's just that initial interaction with the client where I have a chance to get to know more about the client or clients if they're a team of people, more about their business and where I typically assess the project scope. Just really all the things that will let me know if we would be a good fit for each other. Something that I typically recommend you do in your discovery calls or your discovery meetings is for you to have a list of questions ready to ask your client. So it gives them an opportunity to prepare, to gather all the information that we will need to discuss during the meeting. And it also leads them into potential questions that they would want to ask me and by the way if you're interested to know what those questions are that I typically ask my clients I'm gonna go ahead and post the link down below with a notion document where you can see all the questions that I typically ask to my clients so make sure you check that out now let's talk about the tools that I use during this phase Okay, so the tool that I use to set up my discovery calls with my clients is Zoom. By now, you are probably already familiar with Zoom. This is a fairly popular video conferencing tool that a lot of people are using in the workspace. It works pretty well for me. I'm still using the basic or free account, which allows you to have only one user. However, you can add up to 100 participants per meeting and your meetings can last up to 40 minutes per meeting. You can have access to other features such as screen share, but if you want access to more advanced features, you would probably need to consider subscribing to one of these other paid memberships. So once the client has decided to move forward with the project after our discovery meeting and they're ready to sign up for a package and start the design process, then we move on to the second stage of the process, which is the onboarding and content preparation stage. The onboarding and content preparation phase involves specifically me as a designer gathering all the necessary materials and the information that I will need during the website design process. This typically includes me sending them a contract and instructions on how to place their deposit and then moving on to getting their website copy or the website copywriting which is the written content any branding elements and media files that the client would like me to use for their website if they have those and any other required information that I may need for the project now let's talk about the tools that I use during the onboarding and content preparation phase okay the first tool I use during the onboarding process is 
HoneyBook. HoneyBook is a client management tool that is mostly used to take care of all the booking needs for a small business. In my particular case, I use it to send out project proposals along with contracts, invoices, and receive payments all from within the same file. So there are different ways in which you can set up your HoneyBook. I know that it can also be used to take care of your booking needs or your scheduling needs. But in my case, I typically only use it to send out a little proposal at the beginning beginning of the project along with the contract and the invoice that also includes a link for the client to place their first payment and then for them to see the upcoming payments that will be sent out throughout the project. So the file, which in HoneyBook is typically known as a smart file, will typically look like this. This is just a little cover letter. And when they get all the way to the last page, they will be able to place their payment. Right now, I'm just using the preview mode, which just allows me to see the file before I send it out both in desktop and in mobile. So it is something that I also appreciate because a lot of clients can easily take care of signing the contract, reading it, also go through this part of the process from their mobile device, which makes it even easier. I like to make this part of the process as easy and seamless as possible for my client. I really love the tool and I will continue to use it until something better comes up. <laughs> the second tool I use during the content preparation slash onboarding process is Notion. I basically use Notion for the content preparation portion of the design phase, which comes before the website design and development phase. This is the part of the process where the client provides all of the written content and all the relevant information about their brand. I typically have three dashboards that I share with them. The first is the client portal. As you can see here, it just kind of looks like this. I have established all of the different phases of the design process so the client knows those uh, specific tasks that will be designated to them, as well as some tasks that will be designated to me and some other links that will be included in the dashboard for AC access to the other dashboards. The second one is the brand and style questionnaire that kind of looks like this. I basically lay out some questions that they must go through in order to provide some important information about their brand and some other details that will serve in order to start creating their website. And the last one, but not least, is the actual website content guide where the client goes through and provides all of the different content for each one of their web pages. So what I typically do is I go ahead and duplicate each one of these dashboards and then I go ahead and create a specific team space where I will add my client via their email so they are able to access each one of these dashboards and so they're able to easily edit and provide their content here. Okay, so once I've received all the required content from the client during the content preparation phase and I make sure that I have everything I need, then we officially enter into the branding phase. Now, I understand that not every designer provides branding services during their projects. If that is not you or you're just not interested in this phase, you can just skip ahead to this part of the video. Now, the branding phase for me is where the visual identity of the website starts to take shape. And this is particularly important because I've noticed that a lot of the clients that come to me, they come with absolutely nothing to start off. They don't have a logo. A lot of them don't have any colors or any idea of what custom typography is or anything like that. So I like to dedicate a whole entire week to the branding phase. And during this time, I focus on creating a logo for them, plus any logo variations they may want. Then we choose a color scheme or the brand color palette, which typically consists of about five colors. We also choose custom typography, so we select specific fonts that will represent the brand and just the overall aesthetic and the visual identity of the website and the brand as a whole. So dedicating a whole entire week to creating the visual identity of the brand kind of sets the stage on what direction the website design is going to take. So I make sure that they receive a brand guidelines presentation at the end of this week, as well as all the media files for their logo, custom funds, and their colors. Now let's talk about the tools that I use during this phase. 
Okay, so one of the tools that I use during the branding phase is Pinterest. I know that Pinterest is mostly a social media platform, but I like to use it specifically as a collaboration tool where I can easily create and share a Pinterest board, an inspiration board, uh, once I start a design project and include my client in the board so that we can easily start adding pins for the desired aesthetic and the design direction of the project. Sometimes I notice that clients will have an idea in their heads about what they want as far as colors, fonts, or specific imagery. So I think it's a great tool that kind of helps me visualize the desired aesthetic and the design direction of the website. Okay, another tool that I love using during the branding phase is Inkscape. Inkscape is a free and open source vector graphics editor that is compatible with most systems, including Windows and Mac. I specifically use a MacBook and it works great with my computer. I would say that Inkscape is a tool that is pretty comparable to Adobe Illustrator, except Inkscape is completely free. You can download it in your desktop for free. And there are a bunch of tutorials on YouTube that you can watch to learn how to use the specific features. I love using it when it comes to logo design because it allows me to manipulate and change text and certain elements with uh, the note tool, for example, I can just change the shape of certain elements and provide a more customized logo to my client. So if you're looking for something to use in your web design or logo design or just in general as a graphic design tool, I would highly, highly recommend you check out Inkscape. Okay, and last but not least, I wanted to talk to you about one of my other favorite tools that I use during the branding phase, and that is Photopea. Photopea is an online photo editor that lets you edit photos, images, apply effects, filters, add text, you can crop, resize images, you can do a multitude of things. I would say that it's pretty comparable to Adobe Photoshop, except this is a free tool that you can actually access from your browser. So I typically use Photopea to showcase some of my work to some of my clients via PSD files or mockup files. So if I'm trying to showcase a logo concept to my client, for example, I will bring the design into a mockup or PSD file and I will be able to show the client the logo in different scenarios like on a business card, on a sign. And I just think it provides a more professional look uh, and also gives a, a better idea to the client of what the design or what the logo in this case would look like on a business card, on a sign. It just gives a little bit more of a professional and realistic look to the design. Okay, so once the branding phase has been completed and the client is happy with the visual identity for their website and the brand, then we officially move on into the website design and development phase. I typically dedicate about two to three weeks to this phase depending on how large or how big of a website this is going to be. The website design and development phase is where the actual creation of the website happens, meaning where I go on into designing each one of the web pages and applying any kind of custom code or any kind of third-party integrations needed for the website. So let's talk about the tools that I use during this phase. Okay, another amazing tool that I use in my web design business is Figma. Figma is specifically geared for designers, project managers, developers, really anybody involved in the web design or an web application process. It can be used to create, share, test designs for websites, mobile apps, and other digital products. I am absolutely loving this tool. I'm still learning it as I recently discovered it, but I cannot believe this is completely free. And it is mainly used for me to be able to present the web pages or the concept for the main web pages for the website to the client. So it allows me to save some time by just creating kind of like a draft of uh, two of the main pages of the website and invite the client to collaborate into the interface for them to be able to provide direct feedback. I am really enjoying using this tool as a way of kind of saving time and the design space or kind of focus on designing the web pages, the main concept for the web pages present that to the client to kind of set the tone of what the whole website is going to look like. So highly recommend you check it out if you haven't already and I will post a link in the description down below. 
Okay, so once the client is happy with the design that we created in Figma and no other edits are required, we move on to the development stage of the website, which is the actual creation of the website on Squarespace. Squarespace is my favorite web building platform and for good reasons. So I build my websites from scratch and I don't typically use any templates. Squarespace does offer a library of stunning pre-designed templates that for somebody who is maybe not looking to necessarily hire a designer, uh, it provides them a good head start and lets them customize the look and feel of their website uh, according to their brand, according to their vibe. Another reason why I love Squarespace is because it is very user friendly in my opinion. The drag and drop editor is amazing. It requires little to no coding experience and it just provides a very intuitive and user friendly interface which makes it a fantastic options for my clients. Now, this is actually a big advantage for my clients too because once the website has been built, I typically will deliver the website over to the client for them to be able to maintain it and upkeep it. And so with the very intuitive and user-friendly platform that Squarespace provides, my clients are able to easily make small edits themselves like adding a new blog post, for example, or make small updates to their content without necessarily needing my help or without needing to have uh, an extensive knowledge on code. Okay, in a little bonus tip time, I want to talk to you about one of my very favorite tools when it comes to website development, specifically when applying code to my designs, and that is the Squarespace ID Finder. This is actually a Chrome extension that you can download completely for free into your computer. And as it, the name says it, you can use it to find the ID of collections, sections, or blogs on your Squarespace page. So if you're starting to dabble a little bit into code and you want a quick solution to start triggering some elements to apply some of your code to and start playing around with it, then I definitely recommend you check this one out. So once the website design and development phase has been completed and the client is happy with how the website turned out, then we enter into the final stage of the process, which is the website launch and the offboarding phase. During this final stage of the process is when we basically make the website live. I transfer ownership of the website off to the client. And I also like to dedicate a specific time to do a website walkthrough with my client or clients because I like them to feel empowered and let them know that they can actually maintain and upkeep their own website. So let's talk about the tools that I use during this last phase. Okay, so let's talk about another favorite tool that I use specifically during the offboarding and website launch phase, which is when I typically schedule a website walkthrough meeting with my clients. I use a Chrome extension called Awesome Screenshot, which is completely free for you to download in your computer. And it, it's very comparable to Loom when it comes to screen recording tools. I particularly love this tool because it allows you to create a free account. And with your free account, you can record up to 20 recordings and each recording can last up to six hours which is especially helpful when it comes to recording my meetings so i use this tool along with zoom to be able to easily record my meetings and then share the video with my client at the end of the meeting so that they can go back if they want to review a portion of the video to start making edits to the website and be able to maintain their websites themselves so i really love this tool with with a free account, you also have access to other features such as being able to edit your videos in real time through the same tool. You can also download your files in MP4 format. You can have access to other annotation tools. And that is it. Those are all of the different tools and the different stages of my web design project. Let me know in the comments below if this has been helpful to you. If you already knew some of these tools, I would really love reading your comments and learning more about your own process. So make sure you drop me a line in the comments below. I really hope you found value in this video or you found some of this information 
helpful if that was the case and make sure you go ahead and hit subscribe that would really help me out a lot thank you so much for watching this video and i hope to see you in my next one bye now